This episode is presented by HBO Max. Choose your plan starting at $9.99 per month. They've done heart-wrenching examinations of pain and grief, meditations on America's betrayal of black soldiers. But now, a Marvel series is ready to take on life's biggest question. How long would it take for you to do yourself? About a week tops, right? Loki. Now that Marvel's killed off its only good villains, they'll turn back in time to pluck Loki from the Avengers, dress him like he's in a ska band, and do a speed run through three movies worth of character development. I love you, my sons. Remember this place. But honestly, I'm glad they made the show. Tom Hiddleston hasn't been this charming since that POV Chinese vitamin commercial. Probably be a bit busy for the next few weeks. But uh, I'll make it up to you soon, I promise. Is he supposed to be my husband, or are we having an affair? Either way, I'm in. Follow Loki's journey through space and time to escape the clutches of the TVA. A bunch of time cops tasked with a sacred duty to try and make the word prune happen. They want to personally oversee the variants pruning. The TVA has pruned a lot of these guys. Prune on sight. No, no pruning. She's already been pruned. Just prune it, let's bail. So you're gonna prune me? Or he pruned her. Prune it. Prune him. She's self-pruned. Watch them clean up the MCU timeline with the ruthless efficiency of Kevin Feige murdering a Netflix series. Because apparently, the only version of events that's allowed to happen is the one where a rat saves half of existence and Captain America goes back in time to beat his own ass. Take a number, Tommy boy, because this isn't just a showcase for one Loki. There's an entire Comic-Con's worth of variants to cosplay as. Like Sylvie, the femme fatale who spent her life camping out in various Ragnaroks, making it hard for her to trust someone. I can't sleep around untrustworthy people. What was I thinking trusting you? Because you can't trust, and I can't be trusted. And even harder for her to open up to the possibility that she might just want to do herself. And I mean, come on, most people do themselves every day, like multiple times a day, and the timeline is just fine. Trust me. <clears throat> There's classic Loki, proving that Richard E. Grant can make you love any character, even if he's dressed like Kermit the Frog and talking nonsense for 30 minutes straight. Kid Loki, who murdered Thor. But like, Kid Thor. All you have to do is dangle a candy bar near a wood chipper and let nature take its course. Alligator Loki. He is an alligator. <laughs> and Chinese vitamin commercial Loki. What? You can't tell me that's not an extremely health conscious Loki variant. I mean, just look at how many vegetables he made me for breakfast. Oh, hi, Onida. Shan Tsun. They're joined by Mobius, a bureaucrat who's obsessed with Loki, and Jet Skis, which makes him the perfect partner for the man who's also obsessed with Lokis and Jet Skis. See? Jet Ski. Then there's Judge Renslayer, an evil bureaucrat who discovers that she's actually middle management, not upper middle management like she thought. <gasps> Gasp. Miss Minutes, just one of many multimedia presentations this show has to use to explain what's going on without your eyes glazing over. Your salad is Asgard. No, don't do... <sighs> and Kang the Conqueror, annoying theater kid variant. Journey to the Hogwarts at the end of the universe to meet Marvel's next bad guy with a thing for purple. And thrill as after five episodes of fast-paced excitement, Kang plops into the series like the architect from Matrix 2 if he also did improv. You can't kill me because I already know what's going to happen. I, I know designed was quite naturally perfect. It was a work of art, flawless, sublime, All the triumph the TVA evil. didn't know about, I knew. All I have to do is manage the flow of time and prevent any further perfection inherent in every human being as I redesigned it based on your history. I have since come to understand the answer only because it required a lesser mind or perhaps a mind less bound by the parameters of the Ages and ages of cosmic harmony. This scene is 11 minutes long. When Marvel needed to get trippy, they called up Rick and Morty writer Michael Waldron to run the show. And he's bringing along a grab bag of wildly original concepts, like portal guns. 
Space lizards. Space lizards. Barely escaping planets before they're destroyed. Speeches about how existence is chaos. Existence is chaos. Nobody exists on purpose. Nobody belongs anywhere. Everybody's gonna die. Hive minds. Me, I presume. If anyone's anyone, you're me. My passion for unification. You mean stealing people's bodies? Summer, rude. Tech that's always running out of juice. You're out of juice. Characters very precisely and cuttingly breaking each other down psychologically. Insecure need for validation would motivate you to find the killer. You act like prey, but you're a predator. You use pity to lure in your victims. It's how you survive. Getting drunk during big missions. You're drunk. No, I'm just full, but bear in mind, I'm very full. And time prison. You know what they do to third dimensional life forms in time prison? Same thing they do in every other prison, only forever. Wow, uh, where do they uh, get all these ideas? I guess there was nothing left to steal from Jack Kirby, huh? Strap in for what's ultimately a small-scale series that manages to feel huge thanks to massive animated establishing shots. Like when you witness the apocalypse of this world from an empty crater. Enter an infernal nightmare bureaucracy that stretches to infinity. Now let's retire to this office. And welcome to the void at the center of time and reality. The quick, into that bowling alley. So, if you're ready to be stuffed with content like a foie gras goose, enjoy the show that gets you ready for a movie, that gets you ready for the next wave of the MCU, that gets you ready for season two of the show, that gets you ready for death. And as long as they keep making B-plus content while keeping every good actor from doing anything original, this machine is going to keep cranking until we're all in Waterworld. Darkest Timeline! Woo! Starring... Loki on God. Loke, be a lady tonight! The Setting Crashers. BF Kangs. The Old Guard. He who rehashes. Gators will say it's fake. Dramatic weapon unsheathing. For my next trick, love is a dagger. Find a way back to the TVA! Fine. Leo? Come and get me! Betrayals. I never stab anyone in the back. That's such a boring form of betrayal. Judge Renslayer really feel betrayed by her beloved TBA. I guess you don't do partners. Unless, of course, it benefits you and you intend to betray them at some point. How do I know that in the final moments you won't betray me? You betrayed me. No, no, you betrayed me. You betrayed me. You betrayed me. Oh, grow up. Grow up. Apologies, my liege. I betrayed you. About that. You can't be serious. My throne. About that. And hair flips. <sighs> Chrono Trigger. You know, this never would have happened if Tony Stark had just let Hulk use the elevator. He really is responsible for every bad thing in this universe. This episode is presented by HBO Max. Choose your plan starting at $9.99 per month. I am the voice of honest trailers, and I am burdened with glorious purpose. All I ever wanted in this world was carnage. Snap into a Slim Jim. Oh, yeah. 